This is a hill that I will die on. There's something I need to clear up. And this is something that I've had to explain far too many times to people like across the community. This is a conversation about creativity over efficiency. Now I'm going to explain what I mean and I'm going to try and do it in a condensed way. This might be difficult. When you're jumping between creative and technical projects all the time, many different projects for many different reasons, it means that you better have an effective way to remember what you were doing the last time you touched that project. A lot of the time I go around in circles on projects where, you know, I try different things that come back around to other projects and we end up back in the same spot again, revisiting old work and improving on it. When you do that, you better hope that you actually left it in a state that was easy for you to re-enter and to make improvements upon. What this has to do with efficiency is that when you're making efficient projects, especially when thinking about programming, you make it harder for yourself to re-enter the project. So I've had a few people, mostly programmers, that think I'm stupid because I duplicate code and I don't do things in the most efficient possible way. Oh, you do realize you could just do this into one function and only change one value. Yes, I understand. I understand how efficiency works, but it's not creative. I know the next time I want to come back around to this project, I'm going to want to do all kinds of different exceptions in this space. Then I'll just have to re-put it down into separate cases again. So what's the point in making it efficient now? I'm extremely familiar with the threshold problem with creative projects, which is where if there's even a tiny hurdle which prevents you from starting something, you won't ever start it. And that's a problem with recording. That's why I like, out of all the problems with making videos, you know, the actual preparing of the files, the talking, the script writing, the editing, the main bottleneck for making videos is plugging the cable into the camera. And I'm not joking about that. The main thing that stops me from making videos, and I bet a lot of other people as well, is that there's a tiny bottleneck that prevents you from doing it. And it's always the tiny ones which stop you in your tracks. You think, well, I could start doing that now, or I could just click on Reddit instead. And before you know it, the day's over, or more likely you've gone on to another project. So tiny bottlenecks are like the killer of creativity. And when I'm jumping around projects all the time, the most damaging bottleneck is re-expanding efficient processes. If Biogen was designed to be efficient from version one, it would never get past that version ever. It'd be dead completely dead. The same thing for art projects as well, like rendering projects. I see a lot of people that are very heated about the use of shaders in materials. Oh my god, you can't possibly use two of the same shader and then link them together afterwards. Why didn't you just like combine the textures beforehand and mask them properly and then just use one shader? Same f***ing reason. If these are two different parts of the object and I want to have a custom shader, sure I might just be using the principle twice, but if I want to replace the principle with something more creative, I don't want to have to split up the masks again from like the completely efficient version, so that's why I've got them separate. Separate texture systems, separate masking systems. Yes, using the same shader for now, but they might not be the next time I come back around. So that's why I like leaving things in inefficient ways because it's easy to work with. Are you other creators out there obsessed with efficiency? How many projects do you have running? Now, yes, this is partly comedic and partly a joke because people work in different ways. People have different cognitive processes, I guess. There are people that are attracted to efficiency. Oh yes, it invites them back in. They want to work with it. Now it's like a puzzle. They love it. It's great. Not me. Not That's not how my brain works. I'm very visual and like language oriented. But I know from like the years and years and years of experimenting, what is best for me when it comes to making my own projects. Keeping things as expanded and inefficient and just cluttered so everything is easily accessible visually is the most beneficial way for me to stay creative, stay actively engaged and able to interact with those projects. Creativity over efficiency every single day of the week. And I know there'll be people like, oh, these aren't mutually exclusive things. You can be creative and efficient. Yes, I get it. It's a title. We have to choose titles for videos. And also, especially when making tutorials, you do something one way. And because there are a thousand ways to do anything in Blender, everyone's like, why don't you use this way? This way is more efficient. This way is faster. This requires less clicks. This is right here on the menu. Why? Why are you manually dragging in links between node sockets instead of using node wrangler because i don't like node wrangler this is faster for me i like plugging things in manually it stays in my short-term memory i remember where they are if i'm just clicking things around i forget exactly where those nodes were it's just easier for me visually to do it like that like i'm drawing them manually. it feels like i've done effort in connecting those lines like i have a map in my mind an engineer's map of exactly how things are moving and what they're doing now if i'm looking at this part of the notary i can remember what's going on over there because i drew those links manually that's just how my brain works i don't really use node wrangler I mean, I can appreciate it as a useful tool. I've talked about it in videos showing how useful it can be. For me, when I'm actually making artwork, I never use it. And keeping that in mind, coming back to the whole like threshold and bottleneck problem, I, in some of my tutorial videos, I've done stuffing like two or three steps, which can be done in one button somewhere on the interface. And people have gone, you know, you can do that there. I'm like, yes, but the bottleneck of moving my cursor over, clicking on that interface section, going down, looking with my eyes, finding where it is and clicking that, that bottleneck is too much for me to handle emotionally when I could just do like three steps with the keyboard and mouse and it's done. 
It's a pet peeve. I have my methods. I, I use Blender how I want to use it. I code how I want to code. I don't care what you think about efficiency. I'm going to do it how I want to do it because it's how I want to do it. You know, like I share my artwork and I've had people go, oh, do yourself a favor and do this instead. I'm like, F off. <laughs> you can use your method if you want to make your own artwork, but I'm going to use mine because that's how I like to do it. You shouldn't be doing it that way. Why are you doing it like that? How are you? I'm just like, dude, shut up. Or some of all of this process shame. Oh, this person didn't use enough references, let's shame them for that. Or oh, this person used two shaders, let's shame them for that. Or oh, this person didn't use regular expressions, let's shame them for that. How about we just stop shaming people for doing things the way they want to do it? You know, not everyone is looking for a job in the place that you work. It really pisses me off as well, and the business advice. Oh my god. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it, and that's how it's going to be. And you know, I've said stuff like that to people before, and they've gone, oh yes, but it's irresponsible because you're teaching the wrong methods to people, and you know, you should be responsible for that because you have a large following. No, I don't have to be responsible for teaching people any specific methods. My channel is called Curtis Holt. All I have to do is be responsible for being Curtis Holt. I never signed a contract saying I would only do things in the way that you, very specific person, wanted me to do them. What I did do was sign a fictional contract with myself saying that I would be true to how I wanted to do things and that's how I'm doing it. All right, let's, okay, we'll bring it down a little bit. It's the hill I'll die on, like I said. That's why I love seeing when people are learning as well. Like they're trying different things. They're having fun with it. They're experimenting. Like I said, yes, we can give them suggestions for other ways to do things. But if they want to do something that way, they can do it. And if they're enjoying it, that's great because so many people give up for not enjoying the process, for being frustrated with how things are looking. I love watching people do things the wrong way and being creative and trying new things. I think that's experimental. It's chaotic. It's fun. It's lovely. It injects new things into the world. It's inspiring. These people that walk around going, oh, well, this is the way I've always done it. So this is the way you should do it as well. And I'm right. And look, I've got all this experience behind me. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, pff, go away. But anyway, there we go. I've got it out of my system. Now, when I get another message from someone saying, hey, why are you doing it this way? Way instead of this way, I'll be like, hey, just watch the damn video <laughs> because I'm done explaining this. Creativity over efficiency, baby. That's how I keep moving. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time unless you've just unsubbed. But anyway, bye. <laughs>